The Langston River flowed free and wild. Till the Calamity drank it all up. Maybe all that water just grew wings and flew off. Riverbanks swarming with windbags. They're so bent on finding the core, they hardly notice the kid. Lucky for him, a certain famous fairy barge is still afloat. Weeping Nelly. She sends some squirts crying home as she leaves port. Maybe Nelly knows the way to the core. Maybe she can slip right past all the clamor on the coast. Or maybe not. Security skiff pulls up port side. Nelly's just another windbag to those guns. Just then, the windbags notice who she's sailing with. They try to cut her off. They try to slow her down. They try to knock her out. Well, Weeping Nelly tries harder. Try as she might, though. She hits a snag. Kids gotta help her get untangled. Favors for favors. At least she picked a good spot for a break, cause the core is right there. She's got a special surprise for when the water's getting rough. She's gonna need a little help with all them peckers. Traffic things think they're king of the roost now. Rest of us only wish we could fly in times like these. Good couple of times. 
Now, listen close. You should remember this next part. Why go to Prosper Bluff? Used to take an enterprising man, or plain old fool, to venture out that far. The city was the most beautiful place in the world. We all knew that. But on the other hand, some folks just yearn to see the things they're told they can't. And that's why you go to Prosper Bluff, ain't it? There the kid hears something he ain't heard in a long while. How's it go again? That's the one. Timeless. Well, no point explaining what happens next, right? Suffice it to say, kid ain't coming home empty-handed. And besides, it's like the song goes. They'll be here before too long. Darn near celebrated when the kid got back, didn't we? Zolf never thought he'd see a fellow her again. We become fast friends. Calamity has that effect on people. But there was more to be done. There was one last core to find. A scientific journal written in Zolf's native tongue. He learned so much from it. Too much. If only I'd known half the secrets of the Calamity were tucked away in that book, I'd have worked to translate it right away. Most of the Ura never got a taste of Ceylandia's fine goods. 
Unless they were born and raised in the city like Zia here. Girl tried to run away from home one time, but the marshals stopped that, didn't they? So many secrets in there and she can't even read it. Her father's own journal. Kid's surprised when I tell him there's only one core left. I shouldn't have believed it either. The lost and found. Here Kid takes fragments of the old world and makes them whole again. All it takes is some fragments and the bastion makes it good as new. Sure, the world's all gone to pieces farther than the eye can see. But leave it to this gal to point out the amazing view. We could always see the stars. We just never could reach them, no matter how high we built. Zolf offers to help me plot the skyways for the kid. At least the calamity hasn't touched the stars, he says. <laughs> Takes time to sample spirits from my personal supply. Champagnes made with scumbag extract, hence the barley aroma and the nausea. Track the final core beyond the city to the wilds. The wild unknown place can eat a man alive. Place is so raw, even the calamity couldn't cook it. Not all of it. You know what's better than having a slinger pistol in a fight? Having two. Kid's faster in a slinger with those guns. Pin cushions ain't the worst of it either. Pecker's got the core, like they're building a bastion of their own. The welcoming committee scrambles to attention. Didn't expect the kid so soon. They shouldn't have let the guard down. Getting that core was one thing. Getting out's gonna be another. He digs his way out of the clearing, but the wilds won't let him go without a fight. Wallflowers survived the calamity. It toughened him up. Take it real slow, in cushions are afoot.
sling a jaw since old outpost is all that's left of him. Jossie's boys left all kinds of stuff out here. Kids roused up half the wild by now. Kid learns the hard way not to touch those things. Then Kid gets the feeling he's being watched. Not by me. By a lunkhead. And lunkheads ain't fond of two-legged animals. Hit him anywhere but the iron quarters and he only make him mad. The calamity must have scrambled their eggs. The wilds already reclaimed this place. Anxious to get back. After all, he's got the final core. His journey's over, right? Well, no, it ain't. Not by a long shot. Kid knows something's up when we ain't there to give a warm welcome. See, Zolf and I were just wrapping up a heated discussion. Zolf can barely muster the words. The calamity failed, he says. But I will not. And with that, Zolf leaves us here, alone. When Zolf got through reading that journal, he just snapped. Started smashing up the monument till I tried to stop him. Zolf cursed the city, cursed the bastion, cursed me, said he was going home. Zolf banged up the monument pretty bad. But there's a way to put it back together. The shards. We're gonna need all of them to nurse the Bastion back to health. Doomshine's a bit of an acquired taste, like a mouthful of horseradish. Stay alive in the wilds. Pack a pair of pistols and a good blade. Piff. The city brought the shards to the wilds. Now the kid's gonna bring them back. We have to think fast to survive the wilds. Faster than the slingers. They could shoot their pistols with the speed of a machine. They knew just when to start shooting and 
when to stop. Those pistols could spit out rounds just as quick as you could pull the trigger. Learning to hold your fire could be its own challenge. He blew through slinger range like it was nothing. <laughs> Gotta make sure the pointy ends fastened on real tight. After Zolf's little episode, Kid sets off in search of shards. First stop, Jaws and Bog. You'll get lost in that bog, I told the kid, and I won't be able to guide you back. Well, I let him go. What else could I do? What could any of us do? Zolf put us in a real bind. Hurt the bastion bad. But the shards can make it better. They're like smaller doses of the core's medicine. Shame the only place to fill that prescription is out here in the wilds. This place is intoxicating. Something stranger still. Did anybody else survive? Sure enough, he finds peckers, lunkheads, wallflowers, pin cushions, fine apples, swamp weeds, ankle gators. 
kid can't fall, no matter how hard he tries. Now the kids see something stranger still. Did anybody else survive? Peckers, lunkheads, wallflowers, pin cushions, fine apples, swamp weeds, ankle gators. <laughs> Ceylandia's famous watering holes. He has the nerve to flash the shield he stole. He's a petty thief. Sees what's left of the rippling walls. Years of work undone in an instant. He sees what's left of Pith, the bull. The gods, they're all undone. He sees what's left of his lifelong friend. His friend, he's come undone too. He sees. What's left? What's left? I'm done. Just thinking about that place. The shard ain't lost either. Not anymore. Now to find a ticket out of this hole. Bootlickers dig their nasty thorns into his heels. Ever heard of a lung blossom? It's bigger than the stories say. The breath on that thing. Like a scumbag sprung a leak. They say one whiff of lung blossom can make you lose your mind.
Well, the kid prunes it down to size somehow. Hard to get a sure footing in the bog. Mother only knows what happened in the bog. Kid never much cared to speak of it. A shard is like a poor man's core, but beggars can't be choosers. That's it. A few more shards like that, and we'll be back in business. A single shard can breathe new life into this place. The shard's got enough juice to spruce up any of these places. Where whiskey has no scent, but tastes like a pepper boot heel, it's not for everyone. That'll spice things up next time he gets in trouble. The city tried to use the shards to stake out the wild. So much for that plan. Ankle gators used to roam the wilds, and they nested at Rothus Lagoon. Many a tale folks used to scare their children straight originated here. All kinds of beasts were don't know up from down, still lurking about. Even the brushers learned to fear this place. They used to think that ankle gators were extinct. Well, they ain't. One of them has been living in the tall grass. Turns out Queen Anne got a hold of the shard. Ankle gators love shiny things. The brushers use their pikes to keep their distance around here. Now the kid can do the same. They say you can't hurt an ankle gator unless it's raining. And it ain't raining. Sharp sticks make Queen Anne nervous, so she backs off a bit. Those pin cushions been living off the ankle gator scraps. Kid's got a mean throwing arm. Queen Anne can't fit down some of these narrow paths. Queenie leads the kid into some kind of twisted trap. One bad step in that tall grass and he's Queen Anne's lunch. He holds his ground. Seems the queen's running out of options. The closer you get to an ankle gator's lair, the thicker the tall grass grows. The kid's got to make a run for it. That old gator's right on his tail. That's ankle gator country for you. Queenie must escape. 
scared a bunch of peckers out of hiding. It seems even stinkweeds know to stay away from the queen. Sitting in plain view. Now she's coming for him. She's got nowhere else to go. They say if you run across an angle gator, you better keep running. She's starting to get annoyed. Made her mad. Rest in peace, Queen Anne. That was for the brushes. It's done what needed to be done. Queen Anne's reign is over. We even got a crown jewel. That gator's a crazy gal, but so is the gal who promised to look after her. They said Queen Anne was just a folk tale. Now there's living proof she ain't. All that trouble for a single shard, but you know what? It was worth it. The arsenal's complete, in case we need protection. He's a spitting image of Slinger Jawson with that bike and them pistols. Now, whale ale ain't made from real whale, but it'll make it strong like one. When you've got a solid balance, you've got what you need. Any brush's pie can cut to the bone, but that one can cut through it. The next shard should be farther out there in the wild. Know how Ceylandia became the richest city in the world? Two words. Point Lemaine. If the wilds could ever be tamed, it was gonna happen right here. The army's triggers once had the place on lockdown. Might as well pick up where they left off. Blam! Just like my fighting days. A gun like that can even put the wilds in check. Point Lemain seemed better days for sure, but it ain't done. Whole place shudders in a fit. Grand Rail of Point Lemaine. Not only is it still there, it still works. Of course, it's no longer shipping hides and alloys and spices, but it can give the kid a lift. 
Just as long as he can stay clear of the trouble on the tracks. Grand rails all grown over with things a calamity chewed up and spat out. Things eager to take back their turf. Kid don't let so much as one of those things slip by. Heads settled in like they own the place. Takes fancy footwork on the rail, what with wallflowers coughing fungus everywhere. The Grand Rails seem much more fighting than bygone times. The Ura Ceylonian War, 50 years ago, doomed to happen again. It was right here that Zolf's Ur forefathers decided to mix it up. Okay, so maybe we didn't get their sign off on the whole Grand Rail thing. That was bad. The rail must have shook the Ur to the bone down in those dens of theirs. Well, the rail won't last much longer now that the kid took the shard. It's still got one good run in store for them. All the rotten wood there on the rails turn it into swamp weed central. Ever tried dancing side to side while holding your breath? While shooting a genuine registered on the carbine? While choking on swamp weed? While peggers trying to prick you in the eye? Well, let me tell you. It ain't fun. He's got company up at the rail station, waiting for him. Not just another wallflower pincushion, mind you. At first he thinks it's Zulf. Turns out he's wrong. This is for you, says the man. Then wham. <laughs> when the kid comes to, the man's long gone. But something else is there. 
The only words kid recognizes on that parchment are for Zia. Well, what's a kid to do? He took the shard, he took the hit, and he took that note. That note cuts straight to the heart of things, don't it? Finding gourmet ingredients ain't easy these days, but we'll take what we can get. The note says it plain. Zia, go east to learn the truth about the calamity and our people. I'll be waiting. Sincerely, Zulf. <laughs> It ain't too late to unlock the potential of this place. Ain't saying much, but that's the greatest forge in all the city. Nothing makes a gun so dangerous as a keen eye. Still no mail. Go figure. Zolf's messenger was one of his people. Wonder just how many of them survived, and what exactly Zolf told them. The shards are getting harder to find. Not everything blew up in the Calamity. Why Colford Cauldron here blew up way ahead of its time. The cauldron boiled over some 300 years ago. They say it filled the skies with ash and the lakes with molten rock. If you wanted to survive something like that, you had to learn to adapt. So in a way, the beasts of the wilds, they're all survivors too. It takes a certain stubborn pride to keep on living in a place like this. As for us, we learned an awful lot from Colford Cauldron. That learning led to some interesting inventions. The raw power of the world fell right into our hands. fires became an addiction. Sure, we dusted off a good many secrets out here. But we discovered other things we're better off not knowing. The unforgiving scent of sulfurous dirt Taste the air so hot it sticks to your lungs. All 
sorts off. Things crawling underfoot. You can cook those things, but you can't eat them. So much life and all that ash. The more ash we swept aside, the more life we found. Places inhospitable as they come. But still, we pressed on. After all, when we look down inside Colford Cauldron, look down through all the smoke and flames. Saw in there the heart of the world, the heart now laid bare by the calamity. We had to have it. As for the kid, he just has to get that shard out of there. Too bad taking that thing woke up every last stink eye from here to Charleston Bog. Kid's thinking he's got to trek all the way back around the cauldron. Luckily, the cauldron cooked up a little shortcut for him. Sure, it ain't the most convenient path. Biggest stink guy he's ever seen is waiting for him on the other side. Well, it ain't polite to stare. And where there's one stink guy, there's always more. Aldrin's tenants all gather up to bid the kid a fond farewell. The kid don't shed any tears for him, though. With a good spyglass, you can still see the cauldron from the city. But all the fires died out. There's nothing left of it. He comes back looking like the inside of a chimney. They said the wild could never be tamed. If only they could see us now. The shard works like a charm. You can hear the monument's heartbeat again. We need an awful big lost and found under the circumstances. The culture, a still life of old unwanted keepsakes. Taught him 
a little something for my days on the front. The toughest thing about using that gas can is keeping a grip on it. That thing wasn't always meant to be a weapon, but there's no denying it now. We're all a little short on friends these days, so that's a welcome sight.